Welcome to Reputation Revolution. This is the podcast where we help individuals like you to establish your voice in the marketplace, enhance the credibility of that voice, extend the reach of your story and your message, and finally, extract value from your efforts in building a meaningful personal brand that's both recognized and respected. Now, on with the show. G'day and welcome back to the Reputation Revolution show. This is the professional personal branding show where we dissect and discuss and unpack all things uh, to do with building a sustainable thought leader brand in the marketplace. My name is Trevor and with me today I have Brendan Keogh. How are you, Brendan? Uh, Fancy meeting you here, Trevor. Lovely to be here. (laughs) Now, this is our new segment, uh, as it were, bonus episodes maybe we can call them, Brendan, um, where we look at and review and recap the highlights, maybe the lowlights, of a previous episode. And because... Uh, I get on the show some really interesting people and we have some pretty good in-depth discussions, often going up to 40, 50 minutes long. And then that gives us plenty to actually have to unpack then. (laughs) Um, And uh, because there's such a breadth often that we discuss in our day-to-day episodes. So uh, having Brendan with me, who's a content strategist and he works with a lot of a uh, thought leaders who are authors and uh, writing books. Uh, so he is a ghostwriter, but he also is a, an audio book producer. So he's neck deep in the space, and uh, as am I. So we thought we've got some common ground to, to discuss. So, Brendan, l- last episode uh, I had on the show Ashley Foss, who's in, in marketing with uh, Atlassian, uh, but we weren't talking too much about Atlassian, the... Uh, the uh, very successful Australian company that's taking on the world, but more so, uh, Ashley is very active on LinkedIn and I saw her doing, writing some and starting conversation around the whole notion of uh, thought leadership. She has a framework of what is, she calls the four pillars of thought leadership, but really it was also a differentiation between uh, being an expert and a thought leader and what are the differences are. And so we unpacked that. You've had a listen to it. What's, yeah. What was your first takeout from that discussion? Yeah, a great chat with Ashley. And listening to the conversation, I was struck by the question of, so what, does it really matter? Um, which you guys both touched on at different times during the chat. Um, uh, you know, is it just semantics that we're arguing over or is it jargon? Um, but I think what came out through the chat and, and thinking about it more afterwards, it, it absolutely matters because it... Um, um, if you if you have a different opinion of yourself, you can it'll change your behaviour, your act, your actions, and ultimately that's what we're looking at is what are the actions that someone can be doing to take this knowledge and and uh, create the impact that they want in the world. So if you uh, oh uh, it's never been easier to be uh, to an author these days, self publish all of these things, and it very legitimately could call yourself a thought leader, um, and um, and and also a lot of people who it's not as if people go around with thought leader t-shirts or you know <laughs> bragging about it but just if you think of yourself as a thought leader you're going to have a very different um, approach to how you act and, and what you do to your community than if you are aspiring i was very touched by ashley who's uh, obviously um a, 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 a font of knowledge and a, very active in her space and, and challenging and thinking saying mm. that she doesn't think she's a thought leader she's working mm. towards it um, mm. So I think if, if, if you have that humility, you're going to have a very different um, activities than if you think of yourself, perhaps in the back of your mind, but you consider yourself a thought leader. You, you, you're, you're sort of there. You could, it's, could, it, you could easily see how someone could be comfortable or complacent versus uh, yeah. having that challenge of um, I need to keep looking for what's on the horizon, what's ahead, uh, that hunger to do that. So yeah. that was the very first thing that touched me. I've just wrote, written down the word humility because I'd like to come back to that. But um, look, I think you're spot on with all of that. It, it, let's cut to the chase. You know, like it's it, it's a word that thought leader has been, you know, jargonized within an inch of its life within the corporate sector. Um, it, it's like a lot of words that, you know, people self-proclaim. 
I mean, you could be the CEO of a company and not really even a leader, you know. So the same thing goes with the thought leadership. I mean, it's it's almost bestowed upon you by other people. Mm. I think it's a good to aspire to a thought leadership positioning. And I think the having, and yes, from the outside, it does sound like semantics and we're banging on about nothing really. But from my perspective where I teach people to build thought leader brands, and sometimes they're going to be subject matter experts and, and they might not build a thought leader brand. And I think that it's really important I teach people, if you understand the fundamentals of each one, then the good thing is you can take a different path in terms of how you build your personal, your professional personal brand. So um, if we can uh, probably chew over that a little bit today, Brendan, that'd be good because I think the difference is, you know, like the subject matter experts have deep expertise in one area or, you know, in, in their field of endeavor. And they've got to keep up with best practice. Um, they've got, you know, runs on the board. They've trialed things. They, you know, we want experts in our life. There's nothing wrong with being an expert. Absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. The only problem with it and, you know, is when you can find anything and Google anything is expertise becoming uh, commoditized. So there's that side of things. But hand in glove with that is that there are so many experts out there. Again, some self-proclaimed, but some are, you know, they're genuine experts um, how do you then differentiate yourself in the marketplace where, when you know, everyone's got this deep expertise in this particular topic? How do you differentiate yourself from the next person? Mm -hmm. Whereas thought leaders, by kind of definition, they're out there um, changing the way people think about a topic or an issue. They, they look around corners. They see trends. They join dots. They, um, you know, share ideas and, and explore ideas in public. And so by the very means of doing that mean, means that they're, they're probably a little bit harder to um, put in a box. Um, and whereas in a, in a, as an expert, you probably have to find your lane. And uh, I hate to use the word niche, but, you know, your lane or your niche or whatever and go deep and deeper than the next person. The thought leader has to, not has to, just by default, will, <laughs> will be exploring. They probably won't, they, they, you know, they're probably experts. In, in their area, but they want to push boundaries of that area. Do you think, what do you think about that? Yeah, very true. And I think Ashley said it well in her post, which you linked in your show notes, which I think kicked off this whole conversation. Um, you know, and just breaking it down, thought leader. You have thoughts and you lead. Um, <laughs> so um, are you having thoughts um, that are, uh, matter, that um, are different, yep. new? You're not regurgitating someone else's content, yep. which is fine if you're curating content that other yep. people have, have done. That, that's helpful if you present it in a, a new and interesting way. That's helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. But as a thought leader and lead, so do you have followers? Do you have people? Have you built a community that people turn to you for guidance or inspiration, um, wisdom, uh, direction? Um, and leadership also implies movement. There's a, um, there's a direction. You're going, you're pushing, you're moving forward. You're not sitting... Uh, still um, developing uh, and broadening your subject matter expertise. You're, you're looking yeah. beyond. You're looking at other sectors, other industries. You're learning from others. You're not afraid to change um, your definition of yourself or, or the area that you want to focus on, um, which, I, which came through in that discussion that you had. Yeah. The, you, you can evolve, and I think probably evolve was the word that came through. Uh, it's movement. It's it's growing. It's it's looking to the future. How can things be different in the future? How can they be better? Um, what are we doing as an industry, or and what can we learn from other industries and sectors to to change and grow? So um, yeah, there's a lot lot of um, that kind of concept, which is really that self awareness um, of of what am I doing now, and where where do I want to be? What 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 kind of uh, impact do I want to have in the world? And the thing is, from a uh, commercialization point of view and you know we now know we can and we do we commercialize our expertise in many different ways and and I guess from that point of view you know experts are really good can teach because they know the depth of topic thought leaders can but often you know the the way they'll teach is a little bit different as well so uh, whether it's teaching or you know if you're in the consulting game um, sometimes they want you know experts to take you through this, but who's the strategists? And often the strategists are probably are, you know uh, probably more broader in their thinking, and and maybe there's they're leaning more towards a thought leadership positioning. And then you've got someone like uh, and I did mention her in the um, 
in the interview with Ashley, um, Joanna Penn, the creative pen, uh, who is uh, just my go-to expert for all things authorpreneur, that is uh, building a business from your around your brand and your um, your writing, and uh, whether it's fiction or non-fiction. And, uh, but she's also a really bona fide thought leader in the space, and she talks about NFTs and AI and the, uh, the future of audiobooks and everything to do with publishing and, and from fr through the filter of an entrepreneur, which is the entrepreneur, the author as entrepreneur. And, but she, she writes a lot of books that are also, um, you know, she educates and teaches and she has deep expertise. So it really, you can pull the two together. I mean, I think she's a classic example of, um, you know, that someone who is an expert, but who is changing the game and leading the way. And I think the difference is too, is when, you know, if you want to, you build an audience and we all, you know, if you're going to build a personal brand and you're going to build a business off the back of that personal brand, you're going to need an audience somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the thing with the utility content, which is very much the, the domain of the expert, that's really useful, and it can, you know, but there's a lot of that stuff out there. The thought leadership material is really what sparks conversations and provokes thought and gets people angry and um, it, it probably has a more visceral effect and that's the stuff people share as well and follow and, and it stands to reason why a lot of those types of uh, writers or thinkers become authors and they write books to that can change the way things are done. Mm. But then you get the people who are the experts who write more how-to books. Mm. So that's the, I always like the book aspect to it because that 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 uh, lends itself to uh the the way you'd write a book for example would be different if you're a thought leader versus a uh, a pure expert mm. um again i believe that most thought leaders are experts as well mm. and, and uh, i think that's important that you think about what's the outcome you want so anyone uh, know for me listening to that to your conversation what um what do i do with this information of expert thought leader what am i what do I aspire to be? And I think that also came through. Have that self-awareness of where you are now. Yep. Um, uh, be truthful. Don't think because you've published a book you're necessarily a thought leader. Um, I think it, it, there's a higher bar than just that. Um, Absolutely. And, and, um, uh, and, yeah, what do you want to achieve with whatever status you reach? Um, and, you know, Ashley pointed out the, the hard work involved. Are you prepared to do the hard work? Not only do you have to be a gun at your role, whether that's running your business or you're growing your personal brand business or, or just employed and, and dominating your role, you've now got to add these other elements, do the extra hard work, both both expert and thought leader will cry incredible hard work to, to achieve that status. Are you prepared to do that? Do you need to be at that level? Um, so it's always really good just again, that self-awareness, what do I want to achieve? And while it's, it's, they're difficult to define because there is so much crossover between, you mentioned you could sort of be both if, you know, and some people are both, yeah. um, but, um, you know, an expert could equally be sought out for media appearances or speaking, but of course. it's probably just levels of which stage you might be on or, or the breadth of, of industries and, and people, the audience that you're talking to, you know, you're talking more to a, um, a narrow um, sector or are you talking yeah. across sectors or, or are you talking to CEOs who have imp uh, uh, many um, areas that they're look, you know, in, interested in? So um, having that awareness of what you're trying to achieve and, and um, do you really need to be the thought leader or, or is being an expert absolutely fine in terms of generating the outcome you want, getting the clients you, you, you know, reaching the clients you want, getting on the stages you need, that's, that's all you need to be. Yeah. And, and the, the part there too is I think people get confused around the packaging. One of the, the, the things that, you know, having, that's what this is, people I coach and deal with, um, you know, that, that positioning. And I think if you unpack what you really, where you think you fit in the world, then that's, that's good because it allows you then to create, you know, a content plan and a, and a personal branding market marketing plan to to reflect that and it doesn't mean things can't change but i think you know when when I, i've seen people who are genuine i reckon thought leaders and they've certainly got the, the the bona fides um you know to really burst forth in in thought leadership 
and they've always been told they've got a niche and niche and all of that. And and I get it. You've got to have purpose and direction because if you you're too all over the shop, you will muddy the waters, and that's that's you know, makes it hard. For, you know, people need cognitive shortcuts. They need to know. Oh, you're you're you you speak on this type of topic. Mm. But at the same time, you've got to give yourself permission to grow and to evolve and to see different ideas and things like that. Um, I'll just take take us back quickly on that interview with Ashley and she. She has four pillars of thought leadership, where she talks about credibility, profile, um, prolific, as in being prolific with your content, and then depth of ideas. You've got to actually have ideas, <laughs> um, which I thought were really good. And um, I'll put her, her the link to her uh, that article in the show notes because that's a whole uh, episode on its own to go mm-hmm. through those mm-hmm. those four pillars. But there was a few things that we talked about, and, and Ashley talked about the uh, you know look talking particularly dealing with people in um, SaaS companies, software as a service companies. And, you know, we want the, we want the CEO to put out some thought leadership and, um, and what they're really putting out is, is uh, product content and stuff like that. I mean, if you're, um, you know, if you're going to just put out product content and stuff like that, that's not thought leadership. Um, and, and what I thought was really good, um, she was saying that experts shouldn't, attempt a TED talk um, Mm. because it's not going to work for them because that's not what TED is as a stage. Uh, But thought leaders shouldn't be in customer support because that's not the way they think. And Mm. I really love that because I thought that 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 really um, drove that home is that there is a place for you and you've got to find out what that place is. Yeah, I did love that. Um, All of those examples and, um, you know, the work, the, the dealing with a SaaS company who wants the CEO to be putting out thought leadership content. Um, yeah, th- these are why these definitions are important, to be able to push back or at least give yes. um, that sense that, no, well, you can't just be put out some articles and be, be a thought leader. You yeah. can perhaps, we could argue and call it, okay, it's thought leadership style content, Correct. Um, but it's not making you a thought leader. So there's a lot of work you have to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, again, important distinctions that can help um, manage expectations or or just say, no, we have to work a lot harder at this. This is not something that a couple of blog posts will position yeah. you or a CEO or someone as a thought leader. Um, it's a it's an ongoing process. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, the, that uh, with Ashley's really helpful model and the credibility, you know, being a CEO, you get instant cred to be of an expert level. But do you, do you, does it translate to that visionary, that forward thinking um, uh, uh, challenging the status quo that, um, you know, is a hallmark of a thought leader. Yeah. Um, I just want to come back to the, the, the whole thing about, I, th- I said at the early stages of our chat, Brendan, that, uh, you know, experts, if you're going to be an expert, you know, you just got to be aware that the differentiation, the points of differentiation are really important uh, in a personal branding sense. Otherwise, everyone looks the same as a bit of... Uh, commoditization going but um, that leads me to well then you've got to think about other ways of being able to differentiate yourself now whether that's through your sheer force of personality um, whether it's through your perspective and your philosophy on your chosen subject matter or field of endeavor and the other one is your values and principles and they will help you stand up you know apart from others in your space and so it's not one or two things, it's that package, that personal branding package done authentically uh, and then reinforced over a period of time, which is going to work in your favour. So there was that. And the other thing I wanted to come back to, uh, you mentioned it earlier uh, and, and Ashley did as well, was the whole notion of humility um, as being a hallmark of you know a genuine thought leader um, because... They, a, they don't call themselves thought leaders probably, so that's, mm-hmm. again, people might think that's semantics, but mm-hmm. it's a really good giveaway um, that if you're going out and trumpeting and beating your chest that you're a thought leader, then maybe you're not. Mm-hmm. But the other part of it is the humility of putting your ideas out there, of lending your platform to other people um, and hearing their ideas and 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 
the humility of and and the scary part a bit a bit about about putting your head above the parapet and putting stuff out there mm. uh, and knowing that you're not right all the time you're not necessarily the smartest person in the room mm. but you're exploring these ideas and and that takes humility and I think that's a really important hallmark I, I, it came through in the in your discussion with Ashley that you're not you don't have all the answers necessarily you're posing ideas you're highlighting Yep. questions or challenges and you're asking you're not afraid to get feedback in fact you yep. welcome feedback from your network so yep. you're you're starting that conversation that you may not finish that others might then step in and have answers but it's engaging with the community it's highlighting things it's challenging your audience versus uh telling your audience really yep. with an expert this is um, how to do something <laughs> yeah this is it <laughs> this is, is a like, simple you know, way or a better way to do something they're all very useful but just a very different level um, and back on what you also said about how to differentiate, differentiate yourself as an expert, um, which again was the other part of your chat with Ashley around um, she got a bit of backlash from uh, uh, sharing stuff on LinkedIn um, or, and there's been a, you know, a, a backlash in general about uh, it's too personal, take that to Facebook, uh, yeah, which yeah, this yeah. is exactly how you differentiate yourself as an yeah. expert, as a person, um, yeah. by what you like, what you like um, to get along with. Um, what you like to work with, um, you're yeah. highlighting that you're, with your personality. It's not a, uh, it's not about um, uh, anything more than that. Just sh this is who I am. We bring our full self um, to work, to, um, as Ashley yeah. said. So um, yeah. that's how you differentiate yourself in a very commoditized space. People like certain people the way they act. They're gruff or they're friendly or whatever it might be. Just be yourself, and you'll attract people. Um, and more importantly, you'll attract the right people who want to do business with you. Your vibe, what is it? Your vibe attracts your tribe. There you go, nice. <laughs> it's not mine, mate. I don't think I'd make things rhyme that, that well. Um, so that's a lovely end, the way to end this uh, quick discussion that we've had. Um, I think it's, it's. thank you, Brennan. It's 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 good, mate, to, to unpack these types of meaty things where there's no black or white and just heaps of grey. Mm -hmm. But I think that when people listen to these discussions and have their own thoughts and their own biases and stuff like that, hopefully people get a bit out of it and uh, they, they, you know, it, they can pick a path that's probably going to be more suited to them. And it's all about having clarity within yourself authentically as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, and not trying to kind of be something that you're not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, uh, I've really enjoyed this chat with yourself and I enjoyed the one with Ashley as well. So mm. hopefully this is a conversation that keeps going and we get past the, is it a semantics thing? We, I know we've got to highlight that, but we get past that and then we look at the um, the whys and what fors and uh, discuss the grey. Mm. Stay hungry, people. Be the <laughs> underdog. Right, let's, let's get this done. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Brandon. Good on you, Trevor. Thanks, everyone. The reputation economy is here. The world today needs more genuine, credible experts and leaders to stand up and share their experience, their wisdom, their stories and ideas. Are you in?